Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... Susie. Sarah. I once read that names which begin with the letter S are the names of six. S. Hmm. S. Hmm. 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 S. Eddie of Edward is Truth. Hi. Jesus Christ. How did I know you would do an Olga line as well? <laughs> it was either that or a Jessica Harper line, and I I, I feel like I'm going to do Susie Banyan the whole time. I feel like that would that would have only worked if your name started with an S. <laughs> well, but, mm. but here we are. We're, we're doing we're we're doing a movie that starts with S. We're doing Suspiria. There you go. Suspiria, Sus- the Suspiria. original, released yeah. February. First, 1977. Uh, that makes this 45 years old, if my math is... Two fine. years older than me, so yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Show, wow. Way to show your hand there. <laughs> <laughs> but... I, or my age, yeah, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. But you can tell your age with your hand, isn't there? There's something with, with lines, or am I thinking like a tree? I think you're thinking like it, if I cut my hand off and you count the rings. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't thinking no, that um, morbid, but um, more so no, just but like I the mean, lines like, you on mean your like hand. If, if I go to a fortune teller, they can like look at the lines in my hand and just count them and just be like, ah, oh, 43, there Maybe. you go. That's not, a, like, that's not a great you. fortune. No, yeah. I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, I, think I, ha- I think I have just as many lines in my hand now as I did when I was in grade school, actually, except for maybe... A crease or two. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't take pictures of the, my palms yeah. when I was in grade school, so I can't. I probably that. have more because I like mine are all like cracked and uh, callousy because I don't put enough moisturizer on, and I like like do deadlifts <laughs> and stuff at the gym, so it's it's not good for it. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we're talking about a movie here, and um, <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I'm sure most people. Uh, if you haven't seen Suspiria, you're at least familiar with it because this is uh, quite a well-known mm-hmm. <laughs> foreign <Title>. uh, horror <laughs> movie. I mean, just of Dario Argento movies, that's who directed it. This is his most widely available, I guess, or just like most like commercially available in the U.S. or, or North America. And uh, we mm-hmm. already did Tenebrae as an episode a while mm. back so um we're doing suspiria now um so yeah. do you do you want to lead us in with a premise because um some people might not know <laughs> sure yeah young american susie banyan travels to germany to perfect her ballet skills at the tans dance academy Arriving in the pouring rain and refused admission after another young woman is seen fleeing the school. Susie returns the next morning to learn that the young woman she saw rushing away has been found dead. As Susie becomes ill and the school becomes infested with maggots, a bit of research indicates that Susie has wandered into a ballet school that was once a witch's coven and still is. Suspiria. I don't know how to work the title in. Like, because nobody ever says Suspiria in the movie, do they? <laughs> no. It's not like Tenebrae. No. Well, Suspiria is because it's uh, named for the the mother, the 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 head witch. Yeah. Um, Mater Suspiriorum, and I don't mm-hmm. I don't know. They might reference it in the movie. I know they do for sure, like they do in the sequel, Inferno. Um, right, but I, at, I, at, at I, length. <laughs> I couldn't remember if they did, because they just call her Helena Marcos in this. Right. As, as far yeah. as I know. Um, or the, yeah, the directress. Absolutely. I like that title. Yes, the directress. It, it just sounds more, there's more mystique <laughs> to it. <laughs> but uh, Either way. Yeah. Um, no, that was a very good Jessica Harper Susie Banyan impression. She just she does have that kind of like, oh, like, just really checked out. It's, it's just interesting that she plays most of this movie kind of tired and in bed because that's that's the energy that she gives off in it. 
There's also a great deal of uh, scenes that she shares with uh, other actresses who are dubbed. So she has to dub as well because they can't just kind of cancel out her, cancel out the other actress's sound and then just, you know, boot hers up and then take it right yeah, back. Yeah. Like she, so in order for, in, in the entrance of uh, uh, consistency or continuity, rather, uh, sound continuity, they have to uh, have her dub many of her scenes when she's not dealing with English speaking, predominantly English speaking actors. And um, I think that also lends itself to being able to not have to necessarily project because you are your mouth is right there in the microphone, so you can you can just kind of you know be conversational and drift off. Like she that. could do uh, the the what's it called the the ASMR. Ah, uh, <laughs> she could like uh, like not the creepy. I mean, I don't think it's creepy. I I love ASMR. But um, I, I, I played a bit for my mother and my sister. My sister was the one who actually introduced me to this film. But, um, and then I introduced her to ASMR. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I played some whispery ASMR and they both were like recoiling with horror. They're, like going like, oh my God, that's so disgusting. It's like somebody's in my ear. Stop it, stop it. And I was like, okay, fine. What about this? And then just be some people talking more like Susie Banyan, just sitting there just kind of softly talking about their their book collection or, you know, their, their Blu-ray collection and their favorite horror movies. And, and they'd be like, oh, that's nice. That's soothing. But some people can't handle the whisper. And I don't know, sometimes I need the whisper to fall asleep. But that's just a little inside baseball um, or inside my life. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think, I think Jessica Harper, I don't know what she's done since the remake, the Suspiria remake. But um, Which was like I a think cameo. she should get her own YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I think it's more significant than a cameo. But a um, cameo. oh, stop! Um, we'll discuss. We'll argue over that point when we talk about that movie. But um, <laughs> but I wish she'd have a YouTube channel where she just does ASMR. Oh my God, that'd be delightful! Just sitting there and just li- listening to her discuss her illustrious career in horror and genre films. I want to hear. I want her to do a commentary track for every movie that she's done. Actually, now, <laughs> Phantom of the Paradise and um, what's the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, sequel that she was in, where she played oh, Janet? I have no idea. I, <laughs> You're oh, asking uh, the wrong person. Shit. Yeah, I knew it while I was watching Suspiria. It occurred to me, but I'm. I, I can't. I can't think straight right now. Um, <laughs> so, sorry. so you said that your sister introduced you to the film. Yeah, I, th- I believe it was around the year 2000 or so when she was actually getting much more exposure to films uh, than I was. I mean, yeah. I, w- I was, I- I've said before I was moving in another direction, but even with horror, I-, I was kind of releasing my grip and she would kind of bring me back even with like a classic like this, but I had never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing the DVDs were abound, so that's how I know it was like 2000 or around there. Because there were no Blu-rays yet, but um, well, all I was I gonna say the double is that disc. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we have a similar situation because my sister introduced me to uh, Suspiria and Dario Argento oh. as well, probably around the same time, because um, she was uh-huh. into all those movies and, and like lots of other movies too. Like she got me into like the the old like Russ Meyer movies, like not horror. Oh but, like, the, my god! Like Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill, which I love, yeah, and and all that cult shit. So. I do Beyond the owe Valley a lot of, of the dolls. Oh, I love that. Um, but yeah, I do it's so owe, great. Yeah, I, I do owe a lot of my fandom to my sister. So thanks, Melanie. Um, but um, <laughs> I You wanna do an entire other vocal register to thank your sister. I think that's great. Thanks. <laughs> um I'll I'll just send mine a text. <laughs> That's kind of you. Um, but okay, just just to kind of show your your hand here, your your movie loving hand, not the other one. Um, yeah. Like what what's your take on Suspiria? Love uh, it. My, well, that's like it. Yeah. Okay. As far as that, thumbs up in a big way. I yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. It's it's the only Argento I own. And watch oh, with wow. somewhat regularity. Again, it came in my life late enough that I didn't overwatch it, and I never want to. So mm-hmm. I just kind of 
you know, watch it when it occurs to me. And I still, you know, get things. I always forget Joan Bennett is in this movie. So every time I see her, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's Elizabeth Collins from Dark Shadows. And, yeah. but I mean, what is she funny. say I, I, when, okay, when we yeah. first meet her, she's, cause she's, she has this whole thing and she's just like, oh, I simply can't like, blah, 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 blah. Like just like super <laughs> proper. And then she's just like, Anyway, like, I've got to go. But she says something I would, like, had to put on the subtitles. It was, like, French, I think. It's, like, too Oh, I, didn't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't retain French. She, so was I speaking, can't, I can't. she was speaking to the police, the investigators. And, uh-huh. and she's just, like, yes. oh, she does, she does sort of this, like, sachet. Like, she starts to, and she's just, like, <laughs> okay, like, I got to go. Yes. Um, just, voulez-vous she, coucher avec moi? But um, she didn't well, say that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she no I adore her because she basically does in this movie uh, what she did on Dark Shadows which is basically stand there with her hands clasped and act proper and talk like you know yeah. kind of at length she and, had like real just... <laughs> like like bitch energy like she you know she presented mm. very like polite but you could just tell like you know when we see her at the end when she she has the whole thing like that bitch of an American girl, like, must die, or whatever yeah. the, the line is. It's just like, that's who you are. I, I, I knew it was you the whole time. Um, <laughs> I like to call she's her... Committed. Like, she means it. Well, her, yeah, her name is Madam Blank. I, I like yes. to call her Madam Stank. Um, that's just the name oh. I gave her uh, while we did it. Because she, oh, she just has that, like, never. that, like, stank face. Like, she's just, like, you know... <laughs> All right, all right. stink the, face. There's, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, like all the the the, the women characters in this movie, because I mean, like it's, it is predominantly uh, women who yeah. who uh, take up the, the the screen time here, and they're all just like each one of them is so interesting and diverse. Because you also have Miss Tanner, who is like this sort yes. of like she's almost like Nazi esque. In her, yeah. in her wardrobe, awesome. her appearance, her her manner, um, yeah. severe. But yeah, I, I kind of wanted to ask you about that because this does take place in Germany. Um, yeah. Do you like kind of like did you notice like maybe some of like the the correlations to Nazi Germany throughout? Because there are some uh sets or just not sets but like locations that they use that were actually uh prominent uh locations uh, during uh hitler's uh regime mm. uh like that the whole like square uh where where daniel is uh is, yes. is killed by his dog like that that was like there were like no, uh, nazi rallies that were held there and even like the, oh. the tavern where where he came from right before that was where like hitler gave one of his like first speeches um way back right, when right <clears throat> yeah um no none of that jumped out at me because I, actually i think there was only a handful of scenes that Though I know this film was kind of like equally shot in Germany and Italy, maybe a little more in Germany than Italy, and maybe when in Italy it's mostly studio, uh, you know, uh, shooting I think it's just what they're the doing. exteriors were were Germany, like all of the the interiors were were in Rome. Right. The only thing that felt um, kind of German was actually an interior. It's to when uh, Daniel, prior to the scene that you just uh, referenced, yeah. is just sitting in this giant, giant pub with the beautiful glass windows, you know, yeah. behind the stained windows behind him and the dancing on the table and whatnot. <laughs> and, and, and what is a very somber scene, even though it's kind of like explosive and vivacious, it has a distinctly German feel or what I perceive. I mean, I've never been to Germany. I've never been to Italy. So I have a secondhand <laughs> notion of these places and how they look and how they should feel at best, you know? So, yeah. but mo- interestingly enough, I was shocked to see, cause I, I don't remember if I ever looked up the locations before to see so much of it shot in Germany because so much of it is still through that Argento lens that I was convinced they just substituted much of Italy for Germany. <laughs> yeah. It just looked very I- I- Italian. <laughs> To me, so yeah. I I just have a very untrained well, eye. Well, that's I the think. yeah, because like usually with Argento, because I mean like all all of his movies are, are pretty much shot in uh, in Italy, mostly Rome, and he always right. finds like and we talked about this with Tenebrae, uh, 
different locations in each movies that it's like Rome never looks the same. Like none of his movies look the same. It, it just in terms of the setting of like what city it takes place in. And there's even a scene and this is shot in Germany. It's when they're at the, like later on with Udo Kier, when she goes to talk mm. to him and they're outside of this building and it really like that whole scene looked so much like Tenebrae to me. Like it, it, it looked like that kind of more mm. modernistic, um, yeah, like um, like almost like we're in the future now, or just like the future for the, right. for like the, that time, like the seventies, eighties. And I even noticed like the color palette too, because there was uh, um, yes. Udo Kier's wearing this this green uh, jacket, which I'm pretty sure is like yeah. a similar color that we see. Um, Tilda wearing in, in Tenebrae at the beginning when they're like at the airports right. are just like, oh, okay. Like this, like I, I can see where like he made the connection where he started to like go more yeah. into that. But I, all I could think is like, you could probably like intercut this scene with like the John Saxon <laughs> scene in Tenebrae and just like some, totally. some random person's just got stabbed in like the middle of the day <laughs> in, in, this, in this big open public space. Yeah, I definitely got that was another scene, actually, uh, where I felt like, okay, this looks like Germany to me, you know, yeah. like this looks, it looks like even it's like kind of like take on the modern like feels very kind of that that region of Europe, mm -hmm. as far as you know, my limited exposure to it with uh, Professor Milius and Dr. Mandel. But um, and maybe maybe it was also just Udo Kier's presence i feel like everything that he's around get, <laughs> just kind of by osmosis will feel inherently more german <laughs> just because of the vibes he gives off i just he's so kind of like undeniably you know german or maybe some other kind of yeah. like generic but Eastern he's European. yeah but he's dubbed <laughs> here too right right yeah. right no I, I but i mean just his look i mean yeah. it feels so distinct but um okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that, uh, but I, I, it didn't, I, I, again, like I said, I was shocked at how much of it was shot in Germany, because I, uh, this, this, this whole time just thought it was Italy sitting in, like, it, Italian thing, because even, even that scene with Daniel when he gets, like, attacked by the dogs, I was looking at the columns on that building, like, you know, with the, like, the very, very steep, steep uh, yeah. stairs leading up to them, yeah. and thought, like, Oh, if somebody told me that was Italian, it would look so incredibly Italian, like, you know, like the entrance to the Colosseum or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, so don't, don't look to me yeah. as a, as an authority on. Yeah, a, totally. uh, I, I won't. Specific no European <laughs> ar ar architecture. But I mean, like, yeah, because all, all of the interiors, like the whole school that was shot on a, on a on a set because i mean you could tell because really like this the, the building like the interiors are impossible it's like the overlook hotel oh. where even like the entrance <laughs> way like the way it's kind of shaped it's like this kind of like round uh mm. room and there's like the staircase that goes up the side and there's windows but we can see from the facade of the building that like there wouldn't yeah. be any outer walls where that that is yeah. Um, but even like where, like where anything goes in this building, like nothing makes sense. And like, as we go through the movie, even at the end when she's making her exit out, it's just like, where is everything in relation to everything? It's just like the, the, the whole concept of like, oh, follow the footsteps. And it's just like, to where, <laughs> you know, like, it's, right. It's, and even um, the fact that she can tell. There's there's a part of me that like yeah. wonders like if I were in a room and I were hearing footsteps outside of it would I be able to tell if I were that far away from like where they're walking away from the room and that if they were turning left or right noise bounces I, I have yeah. I have noisy neighbors all around me and I can't I will hear something like below me I'm on like the top floor and it sounds like it's above me mm -hmm. so I don't trust footstep sounds <laughs> at all <laughs> well it's also disorienting i mean much like the world that Susie banyan is like introduced i mean from the get-go yeah. one thing that i had forgotten was how uh it's almost a trick that argento does with the score when it's first being introduced i forgot that it pops in uh as she's like you know like walking making her way out of the airport mm. and then it pops out when we get back to her almost like did i really just hear that yeah. <laughs> and then as she makes her way finally outside and breaks through the doors and the and the, the thunder and the lightning is just like okay um it goes full on it, almost like it's almost like it's occurring to her like i think i'm walking into something like i'm yeah. getting or, or as she would say 
I think I, I'm walking into something. But um, she... <laughs> <laughs> I also had to wonder, like... She asks the driver about how if it, if it's been raining because obviously it's thundering and lightning like so yeah. heavily you can barely see like the road ahead of you and everything like that. Um, I almost had to wonder like did she bring the rain with her or is this something that the witches are doing or is it a little column A a little column B like it because it, it, he didn't he say it's only been going for like a half hour and she just kind of smirks at him. I mean, if anything, I would think that it's more just. A coincidence, but if it had to be one, I would say it's more to do with the witches because they're kind of like they're you know about to kill someone. Maybe that's sort of the thing because it rains again at the end of the movie, and that's when they're planning on right. killing her. But it doesn't rain when before they get Sarah or Daniel, so it's a that's or a anybody else, yeah. theory. But um, <laughs> fuck that cab driver. <laughs> Um, oh. these, <laughs> no, these you. guys clearly don't work <laughs> off of chips. <laughs> I love how he's so impatient. Well, he, first of all, like he's really the nicest cab driver that she could have had. Cause all the others like almost run her over or just like, uh, veer past her. But he, he like stops and she's sure. like, well, you help me with my bags. And he's just kind of like waving it. Like, come on, come on. We, yeah. we, we've got places to be here. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I love how she gets into the cat. Like, well, first she's kind of, um, sh- she's like, you know, where to? Just like Esch- Escher Strasse or whatever, which is yeah. interesting because like Escher, um, like the the uh, abstract, like the, the staircase, sort of like that artist who, uh-huh. you know, does all the things with like the upside down staircases, which is on the mural there. So that could right. be a thing because like going back to the impossible um interiors mm, spaces that, yeah, yeah that could be like a, a reference to that but i love how he's he's like oh escherstrasse like it's just like that's what she fucking right. said <laughs> i know <laughs> but no, no no but yeah and then and then she's like has it been raining long and he just like looks back and gives her like this like he just leers at her and like long pause mm-hmm. and then what you said like 30 minutes like, yes. <laughs> like, like, fuck this guy. Um, right, right, right. But yeah. Um. <laughs> and then he drives her through uh, a series of trees that I am convinced the, the Black Forest Tim Burton stole. Yeah, that I'm I'm convinced oh, yeah. Tim Burton stole just the look of those trees for his uh, Batman movie when the Batmobile is first driving like Kim Basinger or Vicky Vale, whatever you know, like and, and everything. And she's like, yeah. "Where are we going?" And everybody knows it's the Batcave. But um, I, I always think about I Batman first. I was always first more because... <laughs> attached to Batman Returns. That was my Batman, and it oh, okay. still is my Batman movie. Like fuck that. As that, is it mine, but that Christopher I've, I, I, Nolan I, shit, you know. <laughs> I didn't. I, <laughs> I didn't know Batman Returns was on the way when I watched ba- the first Batman over and over and over again. Oh, so fair enough. It, it was my Batman movie until I got Batman Returns. Yeah, and, yeah, I I concur. Yeah, but um, just a, and, and you know what? Like, just sorry to go off on this Batman tangent, but like <laughs> similar to this movie, Batman Returns is just like a lot of like really like beautiful nonsense like there's there's really no plot (laughs) at all to either of these Mm -hmm. movies but they just like they're just a lot of fun and they look good you know yeah with a kind of like schizophrenic background (laughs) yeah (laughs) or or frenetic for lack of a better term like just like strange strange fever dream chaos always kind of drifting behind you and You can't you can't really make sense out of things, but at the same time, I this this is a movie that I think I think we've had movies that we've disagreed on in the past where I'm I'm looking for logic in something that probably doesn't warrant that kind of yeah. you know movie going, and with this one, uh, maybe because it's so aesthetically pleasant, but also just because I'm so. <clears throat> Uh, it's so easy to kind of like follow the actors. Every one of the actors on screen either has an incredibly distinct look that I just find captivating or a distinct um, presence, the way they disturb the air and move through environments that I find absolutely compelling and magnetic. Uh, yeah. Even even just, and especially Jessica Harper, um, there's something about her look that is so uncharacteristic of 
I guess, a typical American ingenue, especially yeah. at that time of the release of this movie. She's so undeniably singular and unique. I can't stop watching yeah. her. Yeah, big oh, eyes and, uh, yeah. and like a very unique no makeup. Uh, eye- eyebrow. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> very, very round skull yeah. and yeah. and and yeah again just a dreamy quality the way she just kind of you know speculates about things and looks skyward when she's she she kind of me. she looks like a like a like a living doll almost she does yeah. she absolutely does yeah well this um like the the movie I, actually first to just touch upon what you said about logic um this because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. because I'm I'm like the logic person here like if, if something doesn't make sense I'm, I'm the first one to like <laughs> jump off and just be like nope <laughs> fuck that um but I think like th- I, I watched it today and I've seen it many times um and I watched yeah. it like recently before this too because I, ju- I got the 4k uh, earlier this year looks stunning in 4k by the way just to be a 4k mm. snob for a second there um but I was uh I I, I think I was like really watching it from a certain perspective, because I was I was watching the uh, special features first, and there was an interview with the actress who plays Olga, and she yes. was like, because we've we've talked about this before. We did the the old podcast, and we we talked about Suspiria, but it was just like, is Olga in on it? And I watched this interview with her because I I don't think I've ever seen it before, and she basically said mm. like, oh yeah, she was totally in on it. Like I guess she had like discussions with Argento. And they're just like, yeah, you're gathering information for, for the the right. coven. And as soon as I, you know, watched it through with that perspective, everything really did. Like the little threads of logic that there were, like, made a lot of sense because I was just like, okay, so that's why. Because because she's mm-hmm. like tells her about like, oh, I. When I saw Pat, when she was leaving, she, I heard her say the words secret and flowers or irises. And, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, that's that's interesting. Like, yeah, you wouldn't want to talk to her. Like, she'd find out, she'd be the one to find out real easy if you got into a jam or something. So she was just basically projecting, <laughs> like, who she was. <laughs> but then, like, took that information and immediately told um, Madam Stank. And then that's why they're like, okay, well, we got to keep an eye <laughs> on her because because she's gonna blow our cover or our coven, and right. that's and then and like because immediately after that, that's when she gets the like the shining light and she gets sick, but then um, all that shit happens with um, <laughs> Albert, the the yes. nephew. You know, it's just like Ugh. it's like the dog took a piece out of his harm. Um, is what it sounds like she said. But I always saw that, I'm like, because I'm like, why did they kill Daniel? Is it just because they're really petty? Which they probably are. But then, like, as he was leaving, he was saying, it's just like, you, like, I hear things, like, I might be blind, but, yeah. like, you know, I know what goes on around here. And he's like, ah, fresh air. Um, yes, but but I'm just that. like, okay, so he... So they took him out because, like, he was another person that, like, could have known. And then another liability. Yeah. Yeah. And then they were, they were like, it was after she had the conversation uh, with with Madame Stank that she said the same thing about the irises, and she's like, "Well, you've done really good. I don't know what secret or irises means myself, but I'm gonna tell the detective." And then, like, immediately <laughs> after that, that's when you see like the they're in the pool, and it's almost like yeah. someone spying on them. It's like the camera mm-hmm. goes down. So just like it, there is logic to like the the sequence of, oh, yeah. of actions that happens in, in the movie, which I think I'd never really paid that close attention to in the past because I'm just like, oh, look at all the pretty colors and the sound and, and all that. So, but I, I mean, even in terms of like the way they, I mean, Joan Bennett's character, Madam Stank, as you call her. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you call her that without imagining her and thinking, oh my gosh, she must smell bad. But uh, <laughs> it's not fair. But Stank um, face. Her. Yeah. <laughs> stink face. Stank. <laughs> Stank. St- no, no, she's stink face. But, <laughs> God, poor Joan Bennett. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, anyway. Um, she, she makes a remark uh, as she's uh, descending the staircase after, I believe, uh, Sarah dis- disappears. Yeah. And, um... Talks about like, you know, I'm the one who has to deal with their families. I'm the one who has to answer the questions of their parents. 
And um, <laughs> I love the way she talks too. Yeah. Uh, but um, but it just made me think like, well, what about everyone's parents? Like if you're just like killing girls or making them disappear and whatnot, like what about, yeah. the, I mean, Daniel obviously had no one because he's sitting alone in a pub. His dog can't even be there. His only confidant to like commiserate with. And he has to be like probably tied up outside while he just gets hammered or at least a little a little buzz on and then he goes out so obviously he has no one who's gonna like miss him but like the girls whose whose families are sending them to to europe do they just really do they corner the market with girls or do they put some kind of glamour over the girl? i mean this is where the logic like yeah. could kick in if i wanted to like decipher like but well, what if the, what if they it's a flawed structure but i'm i don't care i don't yeah. <laughs> the the movie's the movie's too much fun yeah. for me well because there's even a line to... like when when Susie first arrived or like the second day when she like finally comes in and they're like we were expecting you last night but then right. she says like oh i know your your aunt or like you know i you know go way back right. with her so, so there's like a connection there so i'm just like is the aunt maybe a witch as well right. because there is theories that Susie is a, is also a witch but she's a good witch um right. mostly because at the end of just the just unbeknownst to yeah, her yeah at the end of the movie as she's leaving like things are exploding like they're not exploding because of what's happening they're exploding as she's going through them it's almost like she's right. paving the way to her exit to safety um otherwise mm -hmm. she would have like also perished in the structure uh, as it as it burned down, but uh, right, she's like Carrie White. <clears throat> the first twenty minutes of Carrie, like she hasn't <laughs> honed her skill. She hasn't. I mean, I, I've heard that somewhat recently, and and yeah. in, in 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 my subsequent viewings, I find it actually more entertaining to believe that she is because, like I said earlier, it makes me wonder. Like, so did it start only just start raining? Like when she entered the same atmosphere as this coven and. Yeah. And the world is just kind of like, you know, brewing like, you know, this this discord, like, you know, like like <laughs> she brought one element and they brought another and then it just smashed together and then rain. But um, and because of that reason, because I do notice like, you know, the doors are opening and even though it's chaos, nothing seems to be hurting her. Um, and it, and then all of a sudden it just erupts into flames once she's out of the vicinity. So and we hear the screams of the coven. So that's yeah, yeah. very Carrie White to me as well. But, um, yeah. But, Something about uh, like there, I, I looked for horror movies from the seventies where they just like we're just gonna end with yeah. like chaos and destruction <laughs> and flames. Yeah, yeah, go out with a bang. The uh, but, um, well, the, well, I was gonna say the movie like an, originally it was. Uh, supposed to be like young girls. Like it was, they were all supposed to be like yes. 11, 12, 13 years old. And I guess yeah. the um, producers were just like, absolutely not. Like we're not going to make a horror movie centered or like killing uh, like Jesus. young girls. They eventually kind of, or like Dario Argento, like sort of did that with the phenomena mm -hmm. years later. But I guess like the, sure. the, the trade off or like how he was able to retain the the imagery of, of like making it seem like they were younger girls was by putting the doorknobs on all the doors like way high. So it made them seem shorter than they actually were. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I just thought it was European because I'm an ignorant American. But uh. <laughs> she... Um, but I mean, I, I mean, that would have been amazing to see like all of this happen to little girls. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't have gotten Jessica Harper or any of the incredible, uh, performances that we got. And also actually, I kind of enjoy that these are like, kind of like still kind of girls, but on the brink of womanhood as it were, yeah. because it makes me, I, 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 it makes me appreciate more kind of like aesthetic choices they make. Like when we're first introduced to Olga, for instance, She's got a very kind of like un, not unkempt, but just, you know, like unmanicured look like her hair is just loose and hanging and she's just kind of like running around, you know, being, you know, this kind of typical young girl. And, and then the next time we see her in the apartment with Susie, she's got this whacked out kind of Princess Leia-esque, you know, <laughs> 
hairdo that I can't even figure out where the hair is coming from and where it's going. Yeah. And she's also dressed to the nines like she's suddenly Gloria Swanson or somebody, you know, like some kind of like screen siren who's, <laughs> you know, like at her <laughs> in her like mansion, you know, like hosting, yeah. you know, like over cocktails or something. And I'm just oh, going, and that, that wallpaper. Is, is, that wallpaper. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Else, yeah. So, of course, she's in on it because apparently, like, she's getting all her bling and all of, like, yeah, her really, really gets to, beautiful Yeah, she gets to, she gets to live off campus. You know, she just, yeah. she just uh, feeds the coven information. I don't think she's actually a witch. She's just kind of, like, doing their bidding for them. She's their Renfield. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> Do you think Mark is in league with it See, too? That's... For the first time ever, I actually thought he was. I don't time. think he was, but it's just like, because the only thing that would seem to suggest that is when, uh, like mm-hmm. after Sarah is killed and then Susie comes in and she's just like, where'd she go? And uh, Miss Tanner's just yeah. like, she took off like a thief in the night. And they're just like, wasn't that right, Mark? <laughs> and, and he's like, oh yes, uh, I heard her leave and, it, and like no i think that she because like remember earlier on there like you know we see that he's doing all the grunt work because he because he, yes. he never has any money and <laughs> yes <laughs> and that's why that bitch tanner's got him doing a, a thousand and one different things so the, right. the she probably just threatened him it's just like you're gonna lie to Susie because if you don't then you're gonna get kicked out of the school um and it was easy uh-huh. as that like he like that's the thing. Like the the men in this movie are meek and pathetic, and and you know they can get pushed around by by these great powerful women. So of course, he, you mm-hmm. know he doesn't work for them. He's he's just you know does he's probably completely ignorant to to what he was even lying about. But you know he was afraid to to get kicked out of school. That's my take on really? it. Yeah. I mean, because, I, I, I mean, I also wondered, like, if there's a possibility. I mean, that's another thing I love about this is you can dig and dig and dig and speculate. And because yeah. uh, another thing I was wondering is, like, well, they are witches. Like, what if he's under some kind of thrall or something <laughs> where he's just kind of, like, agreeable? It's almost like if they gave him some kind of uh, spell uh, lobotomy equivalent where he's <laughs> only, he only knows as much as they need him to from time to time. And maybe Madame I don't even see this is the thing. I don't even like calling her Madame Blank, even yeah. though everybody in the movie like pronounces it that way. It feels so ugly and American. Yeah. Um, if I, I, That's I, I, why I, I say Madame Stank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine her name is ugly and American. I just imagine that like Madame Blanc. I like, yeah. and that's how they pronounced it in the remake. So that's another point for the remake for me. But um, oh, do you like the remake? But, I mean, like, not better. I just like it for completely different reasons. Yeah. Um, and we, and we can go into those whenever we discuss it, but with this one, uh, another, cause I mean, I feel like there's maybe less to speculate about for, you know, for, for better for that movie. But with this movie, I love how much I can speculate and kind of fill in the blanks and wonder about like, well, is Mark and I mean, he could be in a thrall. He could be, (laughs) he could be a Renfield too. But also then I think of someone like Pavlos and I feel like Pavlos is, is just kind of an ideal Mm -hmm fit for them because he's I think he is just weak-minded on his own and therefore kind of obedient yeah. and also something that can arouse more suspicion than they do because he is so strange yeah. that him just milling about the way he is might put most people off it's another thing that makes me absolutely love Susie mm-hmm. as much as I do because she seems to kind of like get used to him really quickly I love that she's just got her arms crossed at one point it's like oh Pavlos how many times must I eat this way you know something <laughs> like that and she's talking to him like they're buds you know like hi Pavlos yeah. how's your day going well, and they're like answer, but yeah because he, he doesn't speak English he doesn't understand it and Miss Tanner's like <laughs> insulting him to his face just being like right? look at him isn't he so ugly um <laughs> yes <laughs> I get like from him I get more of a sense like he's like the the um like the lurch type like he's just like the servant totally. like just like oh that's why I love him and just like you know he'll do whatever um they need him yeah. to that's the thing like because this coven, I mean, just like to talk about like the like the the um, powers because they're all derived from 
the 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 black queen or whatever they call her the, the helena marcos um because the the mm-hmm. idea is that the coven is only as powerful as its head as its as its leader so mm-hmm. it's just like you you cut off the head of the leader they lose their power and that's essentially what right. we see at, at the end um totally. so really like all this uh. yeah like everything like all the <laughs> the these hench people that's just, that's just like every, everyone is like a hench man or woman or, or you know hench person we'll call them like doing doing sure. the bidding for helena marcos and mm. uh so just like you know i i think that y- you you have to be willing enough to submit to the coven to be to be a member of it i don't think that they would just put like a spell on someone to just be like you're one of us now um because <laughs> That does. I mean, they might recruit people. Maybe that's what they're doing. Like they're recruiting mm-hmm. girls. If that's kind of like what the the cover is of of like the dance school, that they're just kind of like um, assessing the students and just being like, okay, yeah, I think that she could be a you know one of us. Maybe that's how they got Olga. Um, but maybe like mm-hmm. Olga is because even like in the interview with the actress she was just like well my take on is that i've already graduated but i'm still just like hanging around or or something because they even say something about that like she's like um uh like last year student or or something and that's why she gets to live (laughs) off campus um so it's 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 possible and maybe that's what they had initially wanted to to have with um, Susie, but then it, she was just kind of like, no, she's prying too much. Like, I, we feel like her energy is more of like investigative, where as like a, mm-hmm. an organization or like a coven uh, of witches are probably more like, you know, you can't be asking questions. You have to fall in line with, with the leader and, and do what they say. So she might be a little too willful for their witchery and that's why they're just like uh-huh. we got to kill her you know i'm so glad you're bringing these things up because you're making me just kind of like in my own mind like justify that's why olga looks so kind of like you know um a typical teenage girl in the locker room because she needs to blend in she needs to look young she needs to have her hair down and just be kind of free and have a you know not a makeup free face but have a face that isn't made up like her grandmother and then like yeah. once she's in her own digs she wants to be you know a woman she wants to <laughs> to ascend yeah. she wants to be an adult an adult <laughs> um and and a and a, and a yeah. uh, <laughs> purveyor of the occult i also love that it's not the occult it's the occult mm-hmm. but um <laughs> but um also, I feel like Susie is such, um, as much as I love her, she, for a great bulk of the movie, is such a passive character also. Like, she's just kind of, like, wandering around, having things done to her. And and Sarah seems to be the one who's actually more, uh, it, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Just, um... Uh, uh, curious. I can't find a better word. <laughs> and, and just you know, and actually acts on it. Like she, you know, I mean, her acting is basically kind of like leaning up in bed when she hears something. Whereas you know, Susie, yeah. because she's also being you know like fed, you know these these yeah. horrible things in her food, and she's also <clears throat> more content to just kind of lay there and speculate without sitting up. Well, like that's I love <laughs> that's like the, the drama the of it all too, because like they're just the way that this is like shot, like when they're after the whole maggot incident and they're all sleeping in the, yes. in the, the dance room and all the sheets are up. And that's when the, the directress Helena Marcos comes in and you see the silhouette and then you start to hear the snoring as she lays down. And like, right. also like for anyone who's able to fall asleep that quickly, like, like teach me your ways. I need to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> takes me forever to fall asleep once I like hit the pillow. But, um, Careful what you wish for. It could be a spell. It could be. But I, I just love how, because you, like you say, like Sarah like jolts up and she's, and she's like, do you hear that? And they're like zooming in. They're like whispering. And it's like, this is serious talk. Whereas like if this was like a normal situation and it was like someone like Susie and even like Sarah, well, Sarah has like her suspicions, obviously, because she's like talked to Pat, but like she hasn't really given any context to any of this to Susie. So she's just having this conversation. And I would think this is a conversation like, oh, hey, I think that's the directress. Cause um, like I recognize her (laughs) snore, but she's just like that one time. And like, like, it's just like super like serious and secretive. And Susie's just like, what? (laughs) 
this is incredible information. Right. Like, this is important. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> But um, also, I mean, I mean, I guess maybe that's why yeah. Sarah's because it does seem like they're kind of like assessing the whole time, like what to do with Susie and like, yeah. well, I don't know. Let's just try this. And, let's, you know, let's give her this thing. <laughs> and, like, and then by the time yeah. we reach the end, like, yeah, Madame Bl- Blank <laughs> is so I hate saying it that way, yeah. but I don't want to say Madame Blanc because she is Madame Blank. That's what everybody calls her. Yeah. Um she is so fed up with just kind of like that little pest has been a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but um sarah they actually have no problem like kind of that's another thing is how much of this is premeditated because they literally kind of lead her to a room that obviously was set for her we don't know how many rooms are probably set that way maybe yeah. every little kind of like corridor and nook and cranny has something that's you know ultimately I mean, well, what fatal was, waiting what was for that her. it was like a big slinky that's the only thing i could <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look at it and I, I mean, I've heard people call it barbed wire, but there's no barbs about that wire. So I just kind of, in my mind, uh, I've heard things alluded to as razor wire. And I'm wondering, is that what it's supposed to be? Like wire that is literally made out of like, uh, yeah, I guess. And she just gets Um, tangled It is cutting her. And I love the fact that she's, she she doesn't even, (laughs) she doesn't even see it before, you know, she jumps down. (laughs) But I mean, like that whole situation. Okay. uh, okay. Well, I think that like. It, again, and this is the logic, which, you know, you have to just, like, throw to the wayside. But, like, she's in a school full of, like, yes. other people. And, you know, they're not part of the coven. Too. She could just, like, scream and just be like, someone's chasing me. Like, and all the students will just then coalesce in the hallway. And then the person going after her will have to, like, <laughs> s- like slink away. Um, but there's just so Unless many instances. there's a where... sleep spell. <laughs> if there is a sleep spell... For them to go to bed. Yeah. Okay, now well, you're asleep. I mean, they there could have also, but in that case, they could have done a spell to make everyone forget about the maggots and just go back to their their beds like oh. normal. Like, <laughs> but that makes uh, that, okay because that brings up another an interesting question that was again for the first time while I was watching the movie, I, or, or yeah. for the first time I can remember, the, I saw the maggot scene and I wondered. Yeah. Do you think the maggots were like an oversight, like a mistake, and they just kind of started falling because, uh oh, oops, all those dead body parts we were storing upstairs, they they attracted maggots, who knew? Or do you think it was maybe planting a seed to see who like their spells don't work on to like make them kind of docile and quiet and, and whoever has a strong enough will to ask questions and to speculate and to wonder like, oh, something suspicious is going on. We'd better find out what it is. You know, like, and those are the culprits. Those are the ones we need to. Because for the first time I wondered, like, it seems too obvious yeah. to like have dead, and, and like the, dead the body fact that parts it, or meat. Yeah, even. the fact that the whole yeah. maggot thing happened in like the first night that Susie stayed there too. It's just like, is this what it's like, what it's like every night? You know, like <laughs> <laughs> just show up and, and have like crazy shit happen. Um yeah. But I love, like, just getting back to, like, their their treatment of her, I guess, like, just, like, of her her sickness. Um, because the first time we see yeah. her in bed, Miss Tanner is, like, forcing a fucking jug of water <laughs> into her mouth. It's just, like, no, I don't want to drink. And she's just, like, you need to drink. I can't do the, the Miss Tanner accent. But, like... Like, it's what very you, gravelly. What the fuck is she doing there? It's just like you're. It's like they they just needed like a cloth, and she would have been waterboarding her. But it was <laughs> it like that looked like torture. And then you had the the doctor there it with the, the needle. So I think that maybe yeah. Miss Tanner. Um, it's interesting that she's sort of like the I guess like the, or at least Madame Stanks like number one because like she is not subtle at all about any of her devious uh acts throughout this movie Uh uh-huh well tanner isn't for sure and and madame blank i feel uh i'm gonna keep calling her that (laughs) madame blank i feel is also really obvious but just kind of cordial like like, oh i'm very sorry i'm very sorry that happened it won't happen again you have my word as a as a woman and a witch oops did i say too much (laughs) well i Okay, Sarah, so Sarah, so and she just and exits Sasha. the room. <laughs> but also, okay, do you, I get such a creepy energy from Professor Verdegast. I don't know. It's just like again, he's. He, I think he has occupies one scene 
in the movie and the rest of the time they're just like talking about it it's like oh that's what professor vertigas thought i needed he said, said it would be best it'd feed my blood but um <laughs> he's uh, he's another man who's just kind of like i wonder like what is your role in this obviously you're not you know up you're up to no good but are you, you seem to be i don't know i don't like the way he touches um I was gonna say just Jessica Harper, but I don't like I don't like the way he touches Susie and everything like that. Like I'm just kind of like stop putting your hands, uh, you creepy old man. And I don't know what you're getting out of this, and I don't want to know actually. The more I speculate about it, the less I want to. Um, See, so he he puts me off. <clears throat> all all of the men actually put me off more so than Pavlos. Pavlos actually kind of like turns into this. He has your heart. Uh, yeah. to, to give another illusion, you already made the lurch comparison. So I'm going to just go whole hog and say, I get this wonderful kind of like Karloff Frankenstein's monster vibe from him. Like, yeah, yeah totally. he's imposing and yeah, he might even be capable yeah. of, you know, violence or destructive acts and things like that. But it, it seems like if you're just kind of like cool around him, he might just be cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I feel about Pavlos. Here's a question. Who do you uh, think is yeah. the one like doing the killing like if it's one person or or multiple people because like when we That's see at the beginning there's that like yeah. hairy arm that comes exactly. shattering through puts me to shame yeah. um but it's like <laughs> it's like is that a is that a witch <laughs> or like is it is it like pablo's or like you know who could it be um cuz we never see the face of the person and there's like the the one that goes after Sarah we only we see the back of their head and that's Dario Argento in his little yes. cameo um but yeah right. i just wanted to to see if like you had a, a theory for who was uh was was doing the dirty work i mean we get a glimpse it's not spot on but we get a glimpse of the arms of Marcos at the end yeah. and they're not Harry yeah. per se I just we I think we just kind of see them I mean like her face like just kind of like very very you know shriveled and and decomposing and you know well, like, I think she's um, in kind of like rot she's invisible anyway like I don't no, but like we, but when she falls on the floor we get a, a glimpse of yeah like but, I, stabbed, but I think that she only becomes see, visible yeah. like once she loses her power and gets stabbed I think like right. all the other times she's just that's just her thing she's she's invisible but you don't think that that's like just what she like kind of looked like in her daily practice that she wasn't just so old that she just kind of like was rotting like fruit like that's the impression I got. I, I just that, think like, that she was always this... invisible. That's just like her thing. But I see if if she can. I mean, also it, it's a question of like, is it kind of like a Bram Stoker's Dracula thing where the witches can like morph and take shape because we never actually observe it happening. Yeah. We can only speculate. Well, we do. We see the um, uh, like during the Daniel scene, like what looks like shadows of witches on broomsticks. That, well, see, that's well, another yeah. thing. Like, do you do, okay? Because I wanted to ask you that too. Do you think that they are indeed on broomsticks or that they're just kind of like hovering? Yeah. Because I don't really see brooms. I do see it could be a broom, but it could yeah. also just be like a long caftan or something, you know, not a caftan, but, you know, a cloak or something like that. Yeah. And they could just be like, you know, like riding the riding the wind or something like that. Yeah. And also they could be something else entirely. I mean, we have that bat mm. that Susie yeah. kills that I don't believe is just a bat. I think it's one of the witches like in bat form. And that's why it's so... You know, or or it could be a minion of the Antichrist. I don't know, but yeah. I mean that's a lot. You can't nail anything down. Yeah. So it, this is like kind of like a you know a a, a largely um uh 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 oh why can't I think of the what's the 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 the, the painting that you look and you see the uh, you know you you see what you see and it's not Rorschach shit Rorschach thank yeah. you this movie is a huge Rorschach <clears throat> test. <clears throat> In and of itself, like, you know, yeah. whatever you kind of like see happening is probably what's happening yeah. for you. I mean, like the, the less <laughs> shown, the the more mystique, like that's that was probably what, what they totally. were going for. That whole bat Absolutely. scene, like all I think of is just like, you know, she she really earned that cigarette afterwards. <laughs> 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 absolutely yeah um, well i think that, it's a cute little puppy yeah i think that <laughs> whoever was doing it i i mean because they they have the same eyes because we see the eyes through the window at the beginning yeah and then we see the eyes behind mm -hmm. sarah later on so i mean who knows it's probably just some unseen person who's 
part of the coven who they send to do like the killing when when they have to but um that whole that whole opening scene okay okay we're really gonna get into it um (laughs) Yes, <laughs> I, I love when we say that. Um, Pat hour, Hingle, but <laughs> Pat Hingle was it another Batman? Um... I know, right? <laughs> Commissioner Gordon from the Burton Schumacher movies. But, but I guess this is Patricia Hingle. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Maybe that's the reason Pat Hingle got cast. Maybe Burton is just a huge Suspiria fan. <laughs> yeah, just like, you have the same name as anyway, this, this character. Because, um, yeah, this, right. this, I mean, this goes back to, I mean, obviously we were introduced to Susie, but we have the whole, like, opening scene kill of, like, here's this character who's introduced and we're following her her story, at least for, like, a, a big part of the opening. And then, like, oof, there they go. They're, they're killed off. Um, yes. But I mean, like, just in terms of opening scenes of horror movies, like, this, like, where would this rank for you? Is this, like, top five, top ten? Oh, wow. I mean, it's one of my favorite things about the movie. Mm-hmm. So, I, I you, man, were you with your rankings, you kids today? Uh- <laughs> I don't say, like, you have to rank anything. I just said, where would it fall for you? You know, is it, is it up there? I, but is that's it- ranking! That is literally well, ranking. Well, no, because okay. to rank, um, I would have to get you to then place exactly. other things. So, how, I, I, so I get a, a top ten, okay. I guess. Until, I'm, so- until I'm I sorry I put you on the spot. What, 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 about, what about you? Do you have an answer for your own? Yeah, question? I think it's definitely like if 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 someone was to ask me like most memorable like opening scenes of, of horror movies like there's mm. there's Scream, Drew Barrymore, mm-hmm. um, probably like Halloween, um, and and mm. this I could probably mm. think of others, but I'm and then you could even say like because you could have the same correlation of like Janet Lee being the, the you know the character that we we follow. But um, with Pat, I mean, it is a it is a a much quicker um, bit of of screen time in the movie. But yeah, like this, it is probably the most explosive part of the movie. It's part, like it's the most it's like the most colorful, the loudest, um, the most in your face, and the most violent um, because yeah. they kill her a lot. They and they. <laughs> they um they even get the friend to I love the um the, the, her just her manic energy like the friend when she's just like open the door oh. but like she's the thing is yes. like for all she knows like Pat could have just been like thrashing about and just breaking shit but she's just like there's a murderer help help and it's just like you don't know that yes. you don't even know that there's another person there and if there is you don't know that there's specifically a murderer um but i love her like just banging on every door nobody's fucking yeah she's trying to get yeah she's trying to get help but what is she gonna do be like but maybe they put, a, that they put a spell on the building everyone was was uh asleep but, uh, <laughs> there you go, exactly. But and so no matter what she screams, but yeah. like what she's supposed to do, just like bang on doors yeah. and go like, I have no idea what's going on. Wake <laughs> up! <laughs> Nobody's gonna wake up for that, yeah. <laughs> or get out of bed. Yeah. But um, even I don't mean to victim blame either, but I do want to ask you. Okay. I Pat, love when you victim blame. Yeah, <laughs> you no, know, I just I'm specul speculating, speculating, because yeah. um, I mean to a certain extent, like okay. You can't blame someone necessarily for like reaching over an open flame and, you know, and for a second and they get burned like, oh, I didn't realize that it was that hot or that I was that close or whatever. But it's almost like, can you blame someone if they hold their arm over the flame for mm. an extended period of time? <laughs> Wait, almost like they're waiting to get burned and then they get burned to go, ow, I got burned. Because for me, the uh, Pat got burned moment is when she... Uh, the the music is the beautiful music which we haven't even really uh, addressed goblin, yet. Goblin, yeah, or the yeah, goblin. Goblin is just yes, is swelling, <laughs> and she's standing there with like you know the rain and everything, and she's looking out the window with her lamp. She's holding a lamp up to it. I don't know how that's working. You're just gonna see a reflection of. Yourself. I know you're just reflecting your yeah. own face back at you. 
But um, it actually does make it kind of creepy because then you see thing mo- things moving in the reflection and you're just kind of like, oh, what are- oh it's just her. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but she stands there and, and you know, but first I think kind of without the lamp or with the lamp low and then holds the lamp even higher and then kind of tilts the lamp to expose the light even more so. Face getting incredibly close to the glass. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Like, is there anything, if you thought anything was waiting for you outside a window, yeah. would you press your face up against it and, you know, just wait until something happened? Yeah. That's, that's a legitimate question I'm asking you, Zach Cherry. <laughs> How much money would it take <laughs> for you to, to be told there's something out there? Well, no. I just, and you go over and just press your face up against the window. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's just the nature of that character because like similar to Susie and you know even uh, Sarah like that like you know maybe the reason why they were targeted um, for being so curious and willful and sure. just like needing to know like needing the answers at any cost mm. to whatever detriment to their personal safety and survival mm. and, and well-being that you know will we'll risk it just to, to see what it is because um, yeah she makes terrible stupid decisions I mean like <laughs> even I mean I guess like it's probably not smart to stay in the school if you think that people are coming after you but like running away um, it probably would have been better to not like separate yourself from your friend who's like apartment you're staying at and just like hiding in there but even like when she first goes into the, the bathroom and the and the windows burst open and she has that she's like huh ah, and the friend comes running in and she's like hey why don't you close it or whatever she says. <laughs> and, and it's like you see it was just the wind and she's like why don't you tell me all about it and she's like well you see the wind it like burst the windows open it's just like <sighs> okay like you have the opportunity to to <laughs> to divulge a little bit more information and you didn't. So it's just like, yeah. it's, it's really your own fault. You know, she could have, there, there's so many things she could have done, but so you're um, joining me in the victim blaming. <laughs> yeah. And if she knew about the, the secret Iris, um, right. You know, like, you know, she could have also gone to the, the belly of the beast. Um, but well, that was another thing that I wondered about. Like if Susie, I wonder if Susie, the reason she could <clears throat> defeat, Helena Marcos is because oh like she's one of the only presences particularly in that school who could have because if she is like this kind of benevolent power who just doesn't know it yet like because that's really easy like Helena Marcos gets taken out super easily if all you got to do is go in the bedroom and just stab her in the neck and that's it yeah like I, I, I'd like, it helps me enjoy the movie even more, particularly the yeah. climax, if the reason it works is, and the reason why Helena Marcos is so not even worried about it is because even she doesn't realize, like, the power that's, like, standing before yeah. her. Like, she knows she's a threat, but she doesn't understand because she doesn't work, she doesn't operate with that same kind of power, that kind of, mm-hmm. you know, like, compassionate, sweet deep voice power and um <laughs> so um, it makes me think like that's what that's why yeah. Susie is able to like hit her and actually hurt her yeah. because, because and that's why the doors start bursting it's like oh my gosh i didn't realize i had this power the whole time <laughs> but um but you, another thing, just to you sound to... like um <laughs> alicia witt and <laughs> oh <laughs> like great legend, just another like <laughs> throaty voice <laughs> heroine deep pull yeah. yes <laughs> the alicia witt is is definitely oh my gosh i never okay i'm gonna keep looking for actresses who speak in this particular register of their voice <laughs> um, although i think alicia witt's a little more aggressive i just always hear her from cecil be demented like talking about how Oh, I don't want to go into it, but she tells a story about her family, a traumatic story about her family. Melanie Griffith starts laughing at her, and she goes, you think that's funny? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so there's more gusto there in Alicia Witt, but um, if Jessica Witt ever got, like, real... I'm Jessica Witt. If, look at it, now I'm just confusing the two of them. If Jessica Harper ever got, like, legitimately angry and started shouting at someone, yeah. maybe she'd sound like Alicia Witt, maybe. but I, I, I still haven't even lived that long. Um, but to get back to the opening sequence in terms of like, it's, I love it for its impact. Certainly like, just like kind of like moving through it is always a joy. It always feels like a big, warm horror hug for me. But another thing that I really appreciate it, 
uh, on, on a more cerebral level is it totally lays the groundwork for kind of what it's going to be like inhabiting the rest of this movie visually, sonically, um, even in terms of like the red, 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 redness, like the red paint looking mm -hmm. Blood <laughs> that they are using dripping down the legs of Pat Hingle, mm -hmm. and um, and even just again like once Pat moves into that other environment that you know apart from where all the Suspiria is going on, she um, it's just like one incredible vista. Like she moves through I think about three rooms or so, and each one is kind of like more elaborate and beautiful. Than the next and again like like it's just kind of like saying yeah you're gonna you're gonna be like behold you know to a lot of this kind of like velvet wallpaper that we have going on and a mm -hmm. lot of this kind of like incredible intricate patterns and bright vivid mixed yeah. primaries you know well they used to the they used a, a particular technique i'm trying to look up uh what it was but it was uh because they had the 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 red blue green sort of thing and it was like a like a three color thing that they could adjust uh, sure, particularly sure. Um, to make them more vivid so it wouldn't disrupt the other mm. colors uh, uh, that were on the screen. And that's why you would see, like, you know, the whole screen, like, a wash in blue or red. Um, so, like, I, I guess it's a misconception wow. that this was shot in, in Technicolor. Um, but I think it was, I think it was actually like Eastman color and it was like one of the last ones of, of the time. Oh, um, but, right. oh, here it is. Um, it is often assumed that to achieve the rich color palette, the film was shot using the outdated three strip Technicolor process. This was in fact not true. No film made after the mid 1950s was shot using this method. This film was instead shot on normal Eastman color Kodak stock, then printed using the three sti uh, strip Technicolor process. Utilizing Very one nice. of the last remaining three strip machines, this issue has been confused somewhat by the fact that on the 25th anniversary documentary, uh, a discussion of the printing process by cinematographer Luciano Tavoli was followed by a diagram showing a three strip camera. Okay. Well, th there you go. <laughs> that's, that's how they achieved it. Because, I mean, like, color does not look like that in real life. No, no. No matter how hard you... And you can't just, like, push up saturation. I mean, that's interesting because if you just push up the saturation, then it's going to affect everything in the field and everybody's skin. The palest person is going to start to look orange or pink yeah. or, you know... I mean, everybody's white in this movie, so orange or pink. But, um... <laughs> I also... <laughs> well, that's another thing. I laughed out loud at, um... <laughs> When Susie is laying there sick and Madame Blanc uh, makes the uh, makes the remark, you've even got color back in your cheeks. <laughs> and she's like laying in like fully awash in red. And I'm just like, she does. She does have color back in her cheeks because she's just got this severe, like, she, it looks like she's developing photos in her room, you know? <laughs> like, um, so that made me happy. Um, I also... I, oh, okay, okay. I want, I want to go in because we, we've touched on it. But I really want to go in on the Daniel murder because I have to say it it's already hard to stomach because I like Daniel. I like everything about him. I respect his kind of like protective impulse uh, when he's being told that his dog uh, mauled little uh, Albert and everything. Mm -hmm. I love his... I love the way he has this this Tanner just like going at him and he just go, it hits right back and he has every yeah. reason in the world to feel completely vulnerable at that moment but he's still kind of ha, 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 yeah. you know on his way out so I respect the man and also I feel for him because of the aforementioned loneliness you know he has no friends in a pub that is the liveliest you know uh, 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 venue yet and then for him to walk back and like have all of this shit going on and for him to not understand and then to be attacked by his own own dog the only per the only presence on that screen that i feel even more sympathy for than daniel is his dog like i worry so much about the fate of that dog at and even if the yeah. dog only lives because usually when dogs attack people they don't let them live for very long yeah. especially if they find well, out because when like one police uh went to uh check on yeah. daniel and the other kept running after the dog um right. but i think that's so the, feel like that's the pettiness of of the coven because they're just like well, this one is because you 
uh, apparently overheard our coven talk, but then this is to your dog because he took a, a, a bite out of Albert's harm. Um, I just love the way she says harm. <laughs> His harm! Um, <laughs> and just like, but, um, her, her like face, like during that whole exchange, because she has this like gleeful, like, like she's enjoying, um, uh, abusing him in that moment. It's just like, like she's she getting really off is. on it. Like she's, Totally. She's so good in in this. I, I like. I hate. I hate her, but I just like. I love to hate her. You know. Yeah, she's terrifying. <clears throat> yeah. And so so good. Like I yeah. mean, I had. I wondered for a while because so many people are dubbed. I was wondering if she was dubbed because she has a distinctly European look to her. Like she, you know, she 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 fits in Germany. Like you know, even yeah. though I'm perceiving Italy. Well, it she's got that the the, Italy, the bun Italy. like tightly yes. woven back and you know just stretching her sad. smile back like even more yes, a lot of teeth a lot of teeth incredible <laughs> teeth and those like those almost like a uh, 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 stainless steel kind of like quality behind her eyes like even when she is grinning at you like you just kind of feel cold like I, I, i'm sure she's in i'm sure in her life she was a warm wonderful person but she yeah. can access that severity uh, the aforementioned severity, like so incredible, she's got it works so well on. But and it makes it does make me really, really kind of uh, loathe her as a character. But I still <laughs> love watching her. Like I, I would never, uh, even kind of like watching her get it in the end. Like I don't derive any pleasure from it. You know, when she's like when they're all clutching their throats and everything. Oh, because that's another thing I wanted to mention. I I I, I can respect within the body of the movie, like the fact that the. Coven are the heavies, and uh, Susie and anyone who helps Susie is, you know, like a hero or at least is a benevolent force who's who's ushering the hero forward. Yeah, I, I can accept all of that. That said, at the end of the day, sometimes I just kind of feel like I'm watching two men, <laughs> distinctly Dr. Mandel and Professor Milius, uh, for lack of a better term, mansplain to Susie what's happening and yeah. well she then... she has this moment sorry that where um because because yeah first Udo Kier is like telling her about Helena Marcos and then the yes. the other guy comes up and he's I think she asks something about Helena Marcos and he's just like yeah she was a very very powerful witch like here in uh, uh Freidberg like did you know that and she yes. she kind of like she's like yes like she she does this yes. like this like blink and like sigh like yes let's move it along <laughs> yes tell me something i don't know come on um stop treating me like i'm an idiot yeah. i'm not a child <clears throat> but um <laughs> but because uh, also that's another thing it's just I, again i recognize like what the structure of the, of the movie is i respect it i can watch it that way but every now and then there's something even about the fact that like when uh the directress you know get, or when when marcos yeah. is hurt the fact that it affects all of them that's empathic yeah like that is that is that means you are connected to something outside of yourself granted it's completely isolated and even though i know milia says it's uh about amassing great personal wealth at the expense of others and obviously at a great expense like you know you're killing uh, quote unquote innocent people um but uh, or just bystanders, let's put it that way. Or people are they who innocent to, though? Like, be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't know if they're innocent, but people who just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let's put they're it. They're associated way. with evil, um, and here's the thing: because the no, the, the the professor even mansplains this that he says that these these <laughs> witches they yes. derive their power from doing yeah. evil things to people. Like they're not good witch. Like they're not like powerful because sure. they're like cultivating all of this like magic and 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 whatnot for just like sure. for like you know flowers and and lollipops and like oh, and course. sunshine kisses <laughs> for life. you know they're 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 literally yes. like they're toxic like they're doing bad things because the more evil they are the more power they get so I don't think yeah. that anyone is innocent that's that's part of this cover. No, no, no. I didn't call that. I don't mean them innocent. I mean, like, the people who they attack. Like, that I was used. That's why I said, quote, unquote, innocent bystanders. Like, I don't, oh. I'm not calling the coven innocent. I'm calling oh. Well, you were speaking about, like, even, like the them, like, getting affected by, by Marcos getting yeah, beheaded. Yeah. Well, no, because... Because it's, it's the fact that there is some kind of, like, connection, the fact that there is something that they all share, like, mm -hmm. that is something undeniable. Granted, 
it could be a full on subservient, you know, like like or submissive position you must put yourself in in order to amass whatever little power they decide you have. I don't really know what the structure is. That's another thing that mm -hmm. this movie doesn't fill in the blanks. And I feel like, you know, the, the remake really goes into the politics of like, yeah. you know, the way the coven works. And I appreciate that. But I appreciate the ambiguity here. Um, because all it does is kind of like make me think, I agree with you, they are a destructive force for sure. But the fact that they do, they don't seem to be only out for themselves. I don't feel like they would willingly sacrifice one of their own um, just to kind of like keep their... Uh, keep their mouths clean, as it were, just to kind of keep, you know, just like, oh, we can't have suspicion on us, so let's just throw one of our own under the bus. It does feel like there is some kind of familial bond, which makes them more interesting, more dimensional than merely, like, a coven of evil women, you know? Like, I, I, I feel like there's more there, uh, or at least an implication that there's more to them than just kind of, like, Hey, we're evil. It's like, no, they're they're a family, I yeah. believe, you know, and they do kind of operate. They just move. I mean, we talked, we kind of went into this <laughs> in our Buffy season three discussion. I won't create any spoilers or anything, but just in terms of like what one bond can be built upon if it's, you know, fighting for good yeah. and what another bond can be built upon if you both just kind of share the same uh, agenda or the same yeah. end game. And you find connection through that. You find like an actual familial bond with it. And I feel I feel like the the coven of Suspiria deserve you know at least that kind of status granted to them from me, a lowly mortal moviegoer. <laughs> I mean, you're basing a lot of this off of assumption as well, because the, there's yeah, this, this totally. Is, you know, but I know that you're the the head queen. queen. Um, Queen, whichever King whichever King title King you you prefer <laughs> but um i mean i i agree to an extent i mean we don't we don't see like there there could be i i think that maybe the underlings like they're probably more like a family but i think that like if marcos was just kind of like oh i need to like get the fuck out of here she would like have no problem getting rid of her uh her disciples and then starting a new coven somewhere else if if, if need be okay yeah i think the head <laughs> if anything the head maybe. is like the head will cannibalize the the rest of the body just to to save itself mm. i mean I, I i can't argue with that because i don't feel like there's any real evidence either way but yeah. I, I that's why i can't argue yeah. with it i'm just kind of like okay that that makes sense if that happened yeah. it would make sense but also if something happened to one of her own and she started just kind of shaking my baby my baby I, that would make sense to me too so well i think she'd probably be annoyed because it's just like it's just like those were my babies but it's not gonna right, it's not exactly. gonna affect like her because you can you can kill you can go and you can kill like a madam stank and a miss tanner but that ain't gonna sure. affect the snake like you gotta cut off the snake's head like like uh this was mansplained to to Susie. To be fair, yes. she did she did pose the question. She's like, might there sorry <clears throat> might there exist a guild of coven or guild of witches? And he's like, I think you mean coven or like the correct term is coven. <laughs> I want us to do so a dramatic she, reading she, of this movie. <laughs> we'll do a dramatic reading for for something at some point, but okay. Um, Patreon. We'll, we'll we'll have no. We can do we can we can do it on on the regular podcast, but we have to like Ooh. prepare for it. We have to know what's what's uh, coming. We can do we can do like a greatest hits of Suspiria. Yeah, like some great scenes, some great exchanges. I think that. But I call I call Susie. <laughs> Uh, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, uh, Madam Madam. Why Blank, you just I do do like a one man <laughs> show of you just doing all the voices? Uh, no, but I like I like your uh, Professor Milius. 
<laughs> I don't even know. Is that what he sounded like? I just was making up a random voice. I'd rather do a reading. I, I don't care. It entertained the shit. I'd rather do a reading of like a child's play or, or something, but I, I don't. Oh, that'd be fun. I don't know who you would. We should do, play. oh, Bride of Chucky. I'll be, I'll be Tiffany and Chucky. <laughs> okay, when we get to it. <laughs> Yay! Oh, good. Something to look forward to. You do um, have you do it. have the um, Tiffany down. Though. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to do it right now. No, I don't no, want to spoil yeah. anything. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the uh, you brought up uh, the uh, reptilian kind of like uh, motif at play, and another one that I noticed. I think the last time uh, that I watched this was um, just a design that stood out to me of the um, the doors that uh, Susie moves to, in in particular, like as she's navigating her way, and the light is on her, and she sees albert and um the cook i don't even remember if she has a name i think it's just like whoever the, the, the yeah the cook like the the ogre-esque uh uh <laughs> oh, i love well she's like sneaking by because they're like chopping up something in there and she's like runs out with like the cleaver or like the the butcher knife and she's like who's there who's yeah. there yes. <laughs> like, like jesus christ <laughs> like is that you're in a school for crying out loud is that how you like <laughs> but Every you know, only uh, everybody's under a spell. Nobody's supposed to be up. So well, they they're not even there. Everybody. They're all at like a show because yeah, exactly. Because, exactly. So because no one Miss be Tanner procured tickets for everyone. Yes, it's like well, why, why wasn't I invited? Or like why wasn't I invited? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I forget what the what the exchange was. It like, like she was cartoon snail. She, she was really no. That was like the most annoyed that Susie was in the movie when she's just like. Well, why wasn't I told? Why wasn't I invited? And just like, <laughs> did she say anything? Like... <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, the thing that I noticed in that hallway, yeah. and particularly like also in um like Susie and Sarah's bedrooms and everything, is just like this incredible uh, graphic shapes of the doors. There's like French doors that have like windows in them. Oh, the transom also window. Abo- and above the yeah. uh, threshold um uh of uh Susie and uh Sarah's room there there's also just this these three kind of shapes that that uh that that, that have little windows that you know the lights glow when uh Susie is making her escape and everything or you know her 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 escape to the climax yeah and they just kind of looked incredibly like insect like to me and just kind of created this atmosphere of um because I think insects, I always go to predators for some reason. Um, uh, like insects are predatory, and they and they kind of like prey on not their own. I mean, like they prey on each other, in other insects. But um, there's something so incredibly kind of like almost natural and food chainy about the way they kill. Like it's almost like business as usual. It's not a crime of passion. It's just kind of like what they do, which also on the other, on the other side of like the witches here, I made an argument for maybe, maybe their humanity, but the, the, the kind of like insect shapes I was reading or insect markings I was reading in like their hallways and everything like that made them seem um, predatory in a very, kind of like disconnected way like it's not about it's not about gleaning any particular joy really from the murder even though there, there is some passion in uh joan bennett when you know her delivery of like i want the girl dead blah, 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 and all that stuff <laughs> she's just letting off some steam but i feel like uh it's it's not from a p- place of actual you know visceral hatred or or anger i feel like it's much more just kind of their nature like this is just what which is of their ilk do and therefore it feels even more threatening to me because it's just like waiting if you're a fly and you get caught in a spider web fuck this is what happens now the spider's gonna come kill me not because it hates me but because i'm prey and i, I just kind of feel like that's that's what those girls are <clears throat> to them. especially the curious one yeah um well i mean you you uh, have a knack for reading into things a lot more than most people, um, and I'm and I'm always amazed by by the the little connections you make because I don't get any of that myself. I just see like a very like I just opulence is is really like how yes. I would describe this and and just like this this very Art Deco 
design to everything that uh, like every and every area does have that distinct look like like you were mentioning the the velvet wallpaper and then you have like sort of like once she gets in like through that big like Escher the, the Escher-esque mural with the irises with like the secret switch right. and the door that opens and there's right. like a hallway with this like gold uh, inscription yes. there's like Hebrew written all along and there's like these these sheer curtains that she's <laughs> hiding behind from from Pablos and still like through this entire thing like I don't know where anything is in relation to anything it's just like she's moving from one area to the next and it's just like yeah how do you know where to go? Like, what's like, like how you, where <laughs> she, she eventually like, this place. Yeah. And then eventually like ends up in the, 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 the master bedroom, the directress's mm. bedroom. And which is like probably the most opulent, uh, of all the rooms. Cause that, that peacock, I want that peacock. Oh I, I, I like, don't we all, I need that. Like, I don't care how gaudy <laughs> it is. I just want that like <laughs> in my living room. I wonder I wonder if there's something you can find on Etsy or something like that. I a while ago I was looking because I actually did at, at one point in my my life I I decided for myself like I need to have my apartment decor be Suspiria. So <laughs> I like oh. literally like did all this like wild shit. I had like doors painted in like a glossy uh, black and put like like white painted like ornate uh, things around it to, to, to look like in the movie and I'm just like oh you know if you, if you didn't know I was gay then but um, <laughs> I literally like looked wow. online because I was just like I I want like a peacock thing like that sort of like peacock thing like I wanted a peacock motif and yeah I, I couldn't find anything like that but I had like the light bulbs like I like I would get like I had like a closet that had a light in it. So I'd like put a green light bulb in there and you'd have like blue and like red and that. And it, it was like pretty crazy. And people were like, you're going to get like really nauseated. <laughs> like it's, this is going to be too much. And I'm like, no, it's going to be fine. And um, oh, it, it was a lot. I, I'll say, yeah. I don't know how to long live it in, I mean, yeah. it's, it's one thing to shoot on a on a stage like that it's another yeah. thing to live yeah in a venue that's yeah. entirely decked out like, I mean, just imagine I, if i, I had I like the velvet wallpaper like it, it, yeah it was pretty crazy but i feel like that it's funny mm. because also even i think my favorite is the staircase in that blue entryway yeah uh, that well that's got like sort of like the snake uh motif to it like the golden or even the tu- like i thought like tubes also almost kind of like tubes that like cocoons might like hatch in or something i mean again it's just yeah. <laughs> it's gross uh, but at the same time it's 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 almost you know, like behold and it reminds me the only thing every time i look at it it reminds me of an old movie uh called anti mame where uh <laughs> rosalind russell's character mame dennis lives in this uh park avenue apartment and she has a staircase that is exactly that staircase except it she's always redesigning it 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 gets redone three or four times throughout the movie and you know that as the years are passing it's gotten redone even more and it just looks like oh that's that's that stage when mame was going through her argento phase like you you know (laughs) i'm getting more of like uh uh ab fab and and how like he has to like (laughs) Yeah, like every exactly. season it's like a new kitchen <laughs> exactly yeah yes yes that is, for anyone that who is gets the, the, the that, reference yeah <laughs> yes either one of them kudos to you <laughs> and welcome uh, and if you don't watch anti mame watch ab fab what are you doing with your life uh, <laughs> but without judgment with love yeah um also another thing i, I like the goblin uh track mm. that seems to kind of like live on in most people's eyes is obviously like the chimey opening la 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 one yeah um and, and rightfully so i mean it, it's it's whatever the sonic equivalent for iconic is yeah it's isonic and <laughs> um i've got the album it's, I, it's I, I like love, right here right behind me for, yeah. for anyone who's who's watching and as, mm. as used as it is in yeah. the movie, I don't feel like it's overused at all. I absolutely adore it every time it's cute. And it's the same and, uh, seven like notes like over and over again. 
And I thought I heard, I had one of the commentaries uh, from my blue uh, running while I was setting all this up uh, earlier. Mm. And I thought I heard, because you know, when you're doing things, you kind of half hear things. But I thought I heard the historian say that it was a play on, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so, which oh. I never supposed before. And I was just kind of like, that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> like, I mean... I was raised Catholic. Are they just making like that, that up, or did they actually like talk to Claudio Simonetti and and get that? I mean, if it's a historian, may, they don't. They're not known for making things up. So yeah. I mean, again, it's probably a variation on it. Like it's not full yeah. on like that song, but just kind of like a variation. Because I was gonna cool. say if that's if that's like what a historian is, then I would just like be like a self proclaimed scream historian at this point. <laughs> You can be. I mean, yeah. until somebody says, no, you're not. But uh, they, <laughs> and do. I, and they, do. they do. They um, do. Yeah. You are. You are. <laughs> Find out what, 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 the, uh, what the requirements are to be to dub yourself a historian. Yeah. Like, there must be some, <laughs> some badge you can carry. <laughs> yeah. If I have to pay money for it, though, like that, that's, that's a bit much. Because I feel like that's, that's, that's probably. You, you don't need any like prerequisites or qualifications. You just have to pay like a like a large fee to some sort of society and they're just like you are now a historian in in this one particular <laughs> subject and your name will or be in a book if they buy look you a up a ghost face badge off etsy you know a ghost face you, badge you you and your you etsy have. i don't know why it's it's occurring it's the holiday season and it's where mm. a lot of people want their gift cards from don't ask me it's in my head okay. but um the other thing that i think of when i watch this is what i call the footloose track I don't know what it's called, what its pro what its proper name is. You'd probably like know the, it. but it's just the one loose, with all the clanging. Loose, yeah, just because Sunday I always make think about like the clanging in the beginning. The dun, 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 and it's not that beat at all, but it sounds like a similar <laughs> like kind of like instrument that they're yeah. clanging on. I don't. They are clanging. You know, when you even... you make like connections to music that I have like. I, I don't even know where you get like because you did the the <laughs> Pat Benatar um, oh uh, yeah totally. love is a battlefield is like the child's play thing and it's actually I I had to like li listen I'm just like okay it's there but like how did you see that how did you hear that I should say like, <laughs> mm, <laughs> chime I don't know. chime just and now I'm, and yeah. now we're like now we're like suspiric like goblin and footloose like that someone needs to. <laughs> Like someone who's listening, who's like savvy with uh, like sound mixing and all that, put a track together of Footloose oh, and Suspiria and do one for Child's Play one theme and uh, and and Pat Benatar Love Is a Battlefield as well. Just just oh see, see if it works. Maybe maybe you'll got a you'll get a hit on your hands. Oh my god, but, that's all I want for Christmas now. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Um, so, I mean. I don't know how much more I have to say about this movie outside of, I mean, is there anything we haven't covered yet? We, you know, like always, we probably will remember it after the fact, but I was feeling no, no. That, that we <laughs> were probably good to, to, uh, to get to the next stage of the podcast. So okay. let's, let's do it. Let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like we killed people. Okay, first order of business, we need a cherry on top. Um, I mean, no, because I, I mean, I know where you mean, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? I mean, um, I, it wouldn't be the same movie for me without Jessica Harper as Susie Banyan, character or actress. So I want whatever she is i forget do yeah. we I, I don't even remember do we assign it to the character or to the actor the character <laughs> okay it's, the character, the character. I, to, yeah, I don't know though well because because you i mean you you went on about how she's so passive through most of the movie and yet it doesn't detract from my enjoyment of her occupying screen time <clears throat> that's that's a feat Okay, whatever. I, I don't, you know, I'm, honestly, I don't care enough well, <laughs> that I would argue this because I don't really have anyone. Like the thing is, like everyone, like there's really like no person that I would want to like be the, the cherry on top and to not be the cherry on top. So, 
if she yeah, she's I the agree. she's the character that represents the movie like she's the the final girl so that that's fair we'll we'll go with her yeah for her to be as ineffective as she is until like kind of like the last inning and then for her to come through in the stretch but sure and for me not to be annoyed by that any other <laughs> final girl in any other movie i'd probably be annoyed at it but i'm not so yeah there you go love you jessica harper <laughs> call me <laughs> oh. okay so last week we uh, asked you who deserves to die the most in evil dead 2 i nominated professor ed getley you nominated jake Across Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, not a lot of people showed up for this one. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, it was 161 for Getley versus 374 for Jake. So oh so you you won that round, good sir. Thanks, guys. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to say is that well, because like this, we record these episodes a week in advance. So like we, the Evil Dead Two episode just released today, and I just noticed yeah. like the like the algorithm, like the YouTube uh, algorithm, like this episode underperformed. Even like the regular like audio podcast got fewer downloads. So I was just like, like we had this conversation uh, earlier because I'm just like, is Evil Dead just like an what did I say it was like an overhyped franchise franchise okay. yeah it's just like it's just like people talk about it and how great it is but do people actually like it that much or watch it because the even the first episode that we did um like the 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 first evil dead that one yeah. uh like underperformed as well as like compared to mm-hmm. most of our other episodes so i don't know i just feel like maybe it's just people don't like evil dead or- or maybe tis the season, like it got released, like you know, the last week of November. <laughs> there is an Evil Dead. There's a new Evil Dead movie coming out. I'm determined That's to. True. I want to know. I want to hear from people what your take on it is because I, I I'm uh, aghast on the I'm... phenomenon of the <laughs> franchise and yeah. its effect on our <laughs> yeah our downloads yeah <laughs> okay yeah anyway let's let's hear what people had to say and again there's very few com very few votes very few comments for this particular movie which i i like i is so surprising to me because this is such a great like we said like this is probably the funniest horror movie ever it's you yeah. know one of my favorites but uh everybody was decorating for the holiday okay it's, it's making up <laughs> excuses michael begley says as useless as ed is uh, I'm sure he's not talking about you. Um, no. Jake put <laughs> the group at danger so many times by being selfish yes. and a dumbass, even if his intentions are somewhat only misguided because he's scared for Bobby Joe. I mean, come on. He throws the Necronomicon pages into the cellar and gets himself stabbed on accident. Sorry, Jake, but you're writing your own death certificate here. P.S. This is one of my favorite horror movies. I'm so glad you guys are covering Aww. it. Thank you for providing us with uh, a great podcast for horror lovers. You guys have quickly become one of my favorite podcast duos out there. Keep doing what you're doing. Love from Glasgow, Scotland. Oh my gosh! Thank that's you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And that just makes up for just after we're saying like why who didn't show yeah up. why why <laughs> do people not love Evil Dead too? Uh, Rebecca, maybe the masses. <clears throat> It's just not for the masses, maybe. Maybe it's more of a niche thing. And I, a passionate maybe. Uh, Rebecca Unbound Mallard. Ed. But only because good old reliable Jake from Evil Dead the Musical slaps hard. Oh, have you... I still have to th- watch it. Somebody downloaded <laughs> or uploaded th- uh, a bootleg of the musical yeah. on YouTube in its entirety. And I haven't watched it yet. I want Don't to. you get, isn't it like the first like three rows or something gets uh, doused in blood? I don't even know. <laughs> I've never exposed myself to anything, not even the cast album. Yeah. So I, I need to watch it and I need to make it part of my, my diet. <laughs> Jeremy Huff. While they were both just deadite fodder, Jake is higher on my annoyance meter. So yeah, LOL. Mm. Uh, Stabane Ellen I kind of feel bad for Jake for being dumb while the professor was smart and annoyed me (laughs) 
Um, That's hilarious. Do we have a vocal minority here? Uh, my Chucky Jordy <laughs> says Ed gave me creepy vibes as a kid. Just didn't like him. Uh, oh, wow. Mr. Check Yourself, definitely Jake. And Heather Utterback says Jake. Him screaming for Bobby Joe like a dumbass always annoyed me, and I always thought he <laughs> was way too old for Bobby Joe. Creepy AF. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. Yeah. Did I even bring that up? I don't think I did, but I agree. I concur. So. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. Yeah. Those who showed up. <laughs> um, so I get first pick. Okay. I'm going to go kind of on the heels. It's nice that the uh that one person who was kind of put off by ed uh, I, even though you didn't vote for mine i like the way you think because i'm put off by someone who we haven't really talked that much about in this movie in a huge way and it's albert um there's something about his little lord fauntleroy <laughs> fashion sense <laughs> And plus, just like the, the, the blonde hair, the pale skin, the blue eyes, it's, you're giving me Village of the Dam, Children of the Corn, all of the above. And the fact that he just, I, I, I don't like him when he's serious because he looks evil, but when he smiles, he looks evil too. There's that one point where, where the, the light, Harper, yeah. Uh, Susie's, yeah, kind of hallucinating and you just see the light pass and he's grinning and it's, no, it's not good. Yeah. It is not, there's nothing that child can do. That won't make me angry or upset or uncomfortable. He is an albino Eddie Munster, and I'm not about it. <laughs> Sorry to any and albinos listening. I don't. It's not about that. It's just about the vibe off the game. Yeah. I, you know, I'm an aesthetic based. Also, I mean, so. dogs know. Dogs, dogs, they exactly. know a bitch when they see one. And <laughs> and the way they walk up to the dog, like the dog's not in their way. Yeah. They like are marching up him and the cook. Yeah. Or like walking up to the dog in a way that I'm like, this is all part of the plan. This is all something to incriminate Daniel. I mean, it's all, I am such a conspiracy theorist when it comes to this movie. Yeah. <laughs> even about the people committing the crimes. I'm still a conspiracy like, but they're a family. Anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. But he's also the creep, by, by far the creepiest thing. Yeah. about. The movie. He's also he's like the most useless about. hench person of the, like he doesn't do anything. He's a pawn. Yeah. He's a pawn. He's a creepy. He just pawn. go check on the so go no... check on how the, the the bedding is coming along. You know, he doesn't. He, that yeah, said, he's just there. I'd probably cosplay as him in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never been blonde <clears throat> before, so why not? <laughs> yeah. So that's my 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 choice, Albert. No, yeah. Albert. Okay. Well, you picked my first choice, so I'm gonna go on oh, my. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's that's how the game works. I'm going to fall yeah. back on, you know, I've already talked uh, about her ad nauseum, but I'm going to go with uh, Madam Stank on this one because, because, you know, like you said, like, like we both discussed, like, you know, there's, there's evil and there's presenting yourself as, as, you know, being a bitch, like, you know, maybe Miss Tanner does, um, Cause she even like has that uh, like a side moment, Miss Tanner, when she's like, "I see when you make up your mind, you stick to it." Like uh, my respect to to that or whatever. So it's like she's a bitch who who's not afraid. You know, even if she's like grinning at Daniel as she's like pushing him, this poor blind man out the door. Um, you know, she owns that. Madam Stank yeah. is in there, and she's just fucking like like being prim and proper and being like, yeah, like lying to your face and being like, oh, everything's good. Like, oh, maybe I should like, you know, just uh, acquiescing to, to what you say and uh, placating you to think like, oh, let me pass this information along to the detectives. I wonder if she even dialed that fucking phone. Like, uh, that's how fake I think she is. She probably just like pretended to like call and she was like, oh, let me speak to like detective whoever. And yeah. <laughs> And then, then we see her Madam true colors. Stank. Yeah, Madam Stank is, is 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 the one, and she's she's just super pretentious. I don't like her. I don't like her vibe. Oh, see, I told like I said yeah. before, like I she so incredibly like just reminds me of Elizabeth Collins from Dark Shadows. It's the role that Michelle Pfeiffer played in the movie to perfection. People criticize Michelle Pfeiffer like she was so wooden. I'm like, that's what Elizabeth Bennett did. Oh, not Elizabeth Bennett, Joan Bennett, Elizabeth Collins. I'm mixing them up. Yeah, anyway. you said Joan Collins at first. <laughs> Did I say John Collins? Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm tired. I need to stop <laughs> talking. But 
Um, okay, but that's what I see. That's why I didn't pick her. But but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Who, who we'll see. With... V- vote your heart. Vote your conscience. Uh, you can vote oh. Albert or you can vote Madam Blank. Stank. Stank. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the... you say you say blank the same way I say stank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or would it be Ma- Madam Stonk? Madam Stonk. She was like that's proper. Uh, maybe that's our compromise. Stonk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can vote on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, you can also vote on Patreon if you are supporting us there. I would like to welcome a new Patreon supporter however so uh give it up to jeremy huff hello welcome aboard hi jeremy thank you and also thank you to andre felix the cherry picker editor of course if you would like to uh follow us on social media the official instagram account is at the cherry picker pod uh, if you're brand new to the Cherry Picker and you are watching us on YouTube, you can find the RSS feed link in the descriptions down below and listen to us at your listening pleasure. Or if you are listening to us, go to YouTube at the Cherry Picker, watch us there. You can see our faces and subscribe. Subscribe to us. We're also on Twitter, but uh, where, <laughs> where can they find uh, you individually? Not on Twitter. I still haven't recovered my account, but uh, you can go to Instagram at Edward is Truth is the handle, all one word. And you can go to YouTube. Uh, Edward is Truth is the handle there. And it's all one word. And um, oh, I feel like I was on something else that I should like tell people about, but I don't remember. Oh, I mean, I started that. What's that? I don't even remember the name. The, the new one? You review movies. Letterboxd. Oh. That thing. I, I've reviewed one movie, but I, I uh, did write it, and I'm proud of what I wrote. Okay. So check it out if you want to. And I think I'm Edward is Truth on that, too. Can't verify that. DM me if you can't find me. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. How about you? You can find me on YouTube, Zach Cherry, Z-A-C-K. Yes, I'm Canadian. And uh, also on Instagram, at Retro Bitch Face, all one word. Twitter, Zach Cherry 8 and uh yeah was there something else yeah no but yeah that's all the social media i guess there's letterbox too i don't i I don't know what the Mm. the thing there's links if you go to my youtube page you know you they're they're in the corner they're in like the banner thing there yeah um but uh back to patreon if you do support uh me on my patreon account which is also uh the support of this cherry picker podcast you will get bonus episodes of the podcast that we do every month that starts at the freddy krueger tier so this last month we covered buffy season three as edward had already mentioned earlier in the episode um and if you do subscribe to that you'll be able to hear our episodes for seasons one and season two as well but this month for the cherry picker after dark we are doing a podcast on Jawbreaker, Yay, which the we, lo- we love, which which is referenced in in every episode as we do the transition to <laughs> <laughs> to the Cherry Picker, and it's kind of like our it's yeah it's which is kind of like our uh, like our our slogan really or, or whatever you yeah. want to call it yeah it's it's like where we kill people but not really um <laughs> so yeah you can you can subscribe and you can get bonus episodes or if you even subscribe at uh the entry level pinhead tier you will get early access to all of these episodes uh as they're released weekly those come out four to five days earlier before they're released so if you need a little bit more cherry picker in your life that's where you'll be able to find it Otherwise, what uh, what have we got going on next week, Eduardo? Okay, we, you didn't brief me on this, so I I, I think I know. Yeah. I think I remember okay. for a change. So is it is it? But I don't want to like say it's something that it isn't. So I'm just gonna dance around it like I do. Is it the one where, like, inside an oyster, you find uh, it's a sequel to not y and not z but okay 
Not a Pearl. sequel. Not a sequel. <laughs> oh, prequel. Prequel. Sorry, you were you were miming. I didn't realize. Let's go back. <laughs> this back, looks. Yeah. The, the, you're you're well. You're going forward from my vantage point. You're pointing. Yeah. <laughs> in the direction where yeah. things go forward instead of. <laughs> Anyway, we get it. I'm it's like, Pearl. Should I wrap it up? What are we're you? Doing, we're doing Pearl. Off? Pearl. <laughs> we're doing Pearl. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and we will be right back.